Did you know that recent guidance clarifies when an industrial facility must perform a Class 1 area analysis for an air permit? Hi, I'm Christine Chambers, a managing consultant with Trinity Consultants. Class 1 areas are defined by the Clean Air Act as certain national parks, wilderness areas, national memorial parks, and international parks that receive special protection from adverse impacts of air pollution. Federal land managers, who are representatives of the National Park Service, Fish and Wildlife Service, and Forest Service, have the responsibility for providing that protection. In 2010, the federal land managers issued new guidance that clarifies when a facility must conduct an air quality related values, or AQRV analysis, as part of a prevention of significant deterioration, or PSD permit application, for facilities located more than 50 kilometers from a Class 1 area. The Q over D criteria specifies that when the total emissions from the project, Q, divided by the distance between the source and the Class 1 area, D, is less than 10, no AQRV analysis is needed. However, a Class 1 PSD increment analysis may still be requested by the State Permitting Authority, or EPA. For companies proposing projects, the Q over D criteria clarifies how to determine when a Class 1 area analysis must be performed. However, the process itself remains challenging. When a project requires permitting under the PSD program and a Class 1 area modeling analysis is required, the facility must engage additional stakeholders, conduct technically complex air quality studies, and expect additional scrutiny during the public comment phase. Trinity recommends several important steps to keep the project on track and minimize unexpected stumbling blocks. First, once the applicant has determined that Class 1 modeling is required, a pre-modeling discussion or meeting should be conducted with the appropriate permitting authority and the FLM affected by the project. This will facilitate early discussion of any concerns, such as emission rate averaging times, emission speciation, and whether to use the EPA-specified CalMAP parameters or specific FLM or state agency parameters. One of the changes in the recent FLM guidance was the elimination of screening modeling, so permit applicants must be prepared to perform a full CalPuff impacts analysis. Which brings us to the second recommendation. Ensure the availability of the appropriate geophysical data for use in CalMet. CalMet uses input meteorological, topographical, and land use data to produce a gridded wind field file for input to CalPuff. Most state agencies will provide a three-year data set of mesoscale meteorological data. However, the applicant will also need surface, upper air, precipitation, geophysical, and possibly buoy data if the site is near a coastline. The quality assurance and processing of this data requires significant technical expertise, as well as robust computing resources. Third, review the Class II modeling analysis which is also required as part of the PSD application to determine if sources can be grouped. This will reduce model prep time and run time. Additional data needed for CalPuff includes receptor data and background concentrations. Receptor grids for all Class 1 areas are available online from the National Park Service and background pollutant concentrations for the area should be discussed with the state agency and FLM. Often, specific data sets are provided However, sometimes the applicant must prepare one-hour ozone files. Once all of the data is assembled and CalPuff is run, CalPost is used to display the results of the analysis, including pollutant concentrations, visibility impacts, and deposition estimates. Finally, be prepared to refine the modeling analyses as needed to address agency concerns, issues raised by stakeholders during the public comment, and possible litigation. Projects conducted near Class 1 areas are often highly publicized and can face significant resistance from the public. For additional clarification regarding Class 1 area permitting, contact your local Trinity office at 800-229-6655.